As Sam said, people can't live in a pamphlet, and he's absolutely correct. I tell you what, Australians are going to be very angry come Monday morning. I don't know if you've heard about this, but capital cities around the country and some of the major regional centres are bracing for what's described as major disruptions next week. Now, what's causing this? Well, there's going to be pro-Palestinian protesters. They're planning a day that they call a day of action, aiming to, quote, disrupt the economy. That's what they've actually said. It's uh, an international group. They're called A15 Action, which I presume means uh, the 15th of the month. That's where that name comes from. They've called for protesters to, quote, block arteries, arteries of capitalism. Now, we know Melbourne Ports is going to be targeted, as well as train stations and other major roads. We've seen the Port of Sydney has been blockaded before. We've seen protesters on top of the Westgate Bridge, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, major traffic uh, problems in Brisbane as well. This will all take place, as I said, next Monday. comes as the war between Israel and Hamas has intensified again. News this week, dreadful news that Hamas admitted to not having 40 hostages that Israel was expecting to get back. There's now questions on how many of those people are alive or not. Join me to discuss this terrorism expert, Professor Greg Barton. Uh, Greg, great to catch up with you again. Let's just talk first about uh, the current state of the conflict. It appears Israel has withdrawn large numbers of the IDF uh, and they've at least paused for the moment. Uh, but they have warned that they do con will continue until they completely destroy Hamas. Where do you see the conflict at at the minute? Quickly with you, Steve. Look, it's at a dreadful point. I mean, we've seen immense suffering in Gaza, but also imagine how it is for the families of these, we think, 129 hostages. Uh, it's reported that at least 34 of them are dead, according to the Times of Israel, perhaps many more. Uh, it's it's just awful. It seems like no one is winning. So um, it's it's not possible to say that the IDF has had any great victory against Hamas. Hamas still remains, you know, diminished but intact in the Gaza Strip, um, and it, it operates as a criminal uh, group as well as a terrorist group. So it's sort of it, it's like a mafioso state. It, it just controls everyone's life. So that, that's an unfinished project. It needs to be dealt with. Hamas can't remain in the Gaza Strip, but, but six months of, of misery haven't made it go away. So, you know, I think we, we do need to be talking about the day after where, you know, what the, what the, the future holds, because it looks like Israel needs help. That it, you know, it, it can't do this alone, but it won't get that help unless there's some agreement on a way forward. Uh, you know this Hamas group as well as anyone. We, we note that the, the nominal head of Hamas uh, has had some of his children killed in a drone attack uh, in Gaza. Uh, what's his reaction likely to be to that? Is that going to make him back off or is that going to make him more determined to continue to, to try and uh, destroy Israel? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, apparently Netanyahu was not briefed on that, on that hit. Uh, it does seem to have come at a time that's hardly going to help with negotiations. We've seen video uh, feed from, from Doha and his reaction, the news that his sons and, and grandsons had been killed was, was you know, there was no reaction. Maybe he's a psychopath, maybe, um, you know, we, we're missing something, but but we do know that this organisation and he as a leader uh, has made a deliberate calculation that they believe they grow in the blood of martyrs, as they would put it. So it's, it's a terrible, callous logic, uh, even for their own family members. But you do wonder what the prospects are for the, the negotiation for the next ceasefire when you have things like this happening. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to make it easier, that's for sure. We're going to see these protests next week. Greg, I know that uh, you've had a close association with Deakin Uni and they're even thinking about protesting there, some loose connection between Deakin and Israel that I don't quite understand. Uh, but... You know, this, these Palestinian protesters, I mean, if they're protesting about the, the loss of life of innocent people, OK, you, you could perhaps wear that. But that's not what they're protesting for. They're, they're saying that Israel, and they're talking about, you know, from the river to the sea, they're basically protesting and putting their hands up and saying, we'd like to see Israel destroyed. Yeah, as you said, Steve, this uh, A15 Action Group is an international network. We don't know how large or powerful it is. You know, to put it in context, with six months of this war in Gaza, we've had weekly protests in our cities and they've been overwhelmingly peaceful. Large numbers of people, very mixed backgrounds. 
So you'd have to think that this uh, 815 action group doesn't represent those people. And, and hopefully what we'll see is a much smaller crowd than they're expecting. And I say hopefully because I don't think this is the way, as you, as you suggest, to help the people of, of Gaza and Palestine or Israel. It's, it's you know, what, what can it possibly add? Uh, our government is, is you know, taking um, a, a firm stand. Some people criticise it, but it's, it's trying to look at what comes next and look at a, a plan for the future. Uh, how is that going to, how is this action on Monday going to make the government do anything different? It's only going to rebound and discredit the sort of the broader general movement of people who have been protesting weekly, concerned about what's happening in Gaza. So I, I think it's very mistaken. Um, I, I don't think it represents a large section of society. Um, I think we should celebrate the fact that amidst all the tragedy and emotion of what's happened this last six months, uh, Australians have been able to turn up peacefully and, and show their concern without major incident. Um, let's hope this doesn't threaten that. Yeah, I've got a bad feeling about it, I must say, Greg. Professor Greg Barton, thank you very much for joining us.